Hey students, I'm so excited to be starting a new lesson with you guys this week and I came up with a really fun theme that I think you'll love and the title for it is Thankful for Provision. I chose a verse from Genesis 1:29 that says, Then Yehovah said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And I pulled up all these cool pictures of the variety of seeds that God has created and all the different plants that he's blessed us with. I think it's so cool to see the different designs and shapes. So you guessed it, the theme of this project is going to be food, but I think you're going to love this because I've created a very open-ended project. So you have lots of options depending on what interests you and what you're excited about. <coughs> so I chose this because we've been having fun in our garden this year. And it's so cool for me to see how God started off with this little tiny seed and all the information it needs encapsulated in that little, little tiny thing. Um, here's a picture of some of the broccoli we've grown in our garden. And I wanted to show you the process of how it starts and then the cycle completes again. So we have those little baby plants, it grows into a full head of broccoli that we can harvest and turn into some amazing stir fry. Um, and what we do every year is instead of eating all of the harvest, we usually save at least one plant and um, allow it to go ahead and bolt, which means it goes to flower. So all the little pieces of the broccoli start to open up and blossom. And as those blossoms die off, they leave behind seed pods that you can see in the far right picture. Let those dry out and then we save those to have seed for the next year and continue the cycle again. It's such a beautiful thing and so cool that we can grow our own food and be blessed with such abundance. He gives us so many seeds for the next year and uh, such an incredible amount of food. So in this project, I'm going to start you off and hopefully inspire you as we look at food through art, through all of history, from the past to the present, from ancient times when the refrigeration looked quite a bit different than our refrigerators of today. Um, and just thinking how different it's been in different cultures, um, but how we appreciate our daily bread every day. So I'm going to start off with some modern work. I came across this building designed by Thomas Heatherwick that was done in the 2010 World Expo. If you don't know what a World Expo is, it's usually a coming together of many nations that want to showcase the work um, that their their nation has put together, whether it's you know, engineering or architecture or artistry. They're putting together kind of the most innovative concepts that they're working on at the time. Um, you might have heard of the Eiffel Tower. Well, that was a building that was actually done for a World Expo in the past that they were learning much about steel and how steel could carry such incredible weights. Um, that actually remained, although most Expo buildings are enjoyed for a short season and then taken down. But I wanted to show you this one um, that the UK designed. And what he did, Mr. Heatherwick, he took 60,000 acrylic optic fibers that are all 25 foot long. And at the end of each acrylic fiber, there's a different family of seeds for a different plant. And he created this cool six story tall structure. It looks like almost like a dandelion um, puff, although it's more of a cube. And because of that way he designed it, all those filaments kind of move and um, blow in the breeze to a certain degree. So it looks like a wheat stalk or a dandelion blowing around. I wanted to show you some of the cool behind the scenes designs just to show you that our ideas that we have, however simple, can really transform into something amazing. So his initial concept sketch that you see in number one is quite basic, although you see his idea behind it and that he wanted it to be in an environment that didn't have a flat ground but had this kind of undulating surface. In number two, you can see his section plan as he works out some more of the details, almost as if you cut through a section to see what the inside of the building would look like and how he could possibly attach all of those rods um, and fiber optics to showcase all the seeds. And then three, you see the landscape concept, how he used a piece of paper and folded it into these triangular surface planes to create this cool ground level. And the last one is the actual CAD or computer-aided drafting drawing where you get the site plan and all of the details that flesh out the final completed structure. It's so cool. Here's some views from the external view going into the building and then what it looks like as you enter inside 
and then a close-up of all the cool seeds that you can see. I just think that was a really beautiful way to uh, memorialize God's work, I think. So for this lesson, we are going to be talking about playing around with food. And I know you've heard it's not cool to play with your food, but I remember when I was in third grade, I loved to bring my mom breakfast in bed. And one time I took this cantaloupe and I cut it out certain sections and made this really cool radial design um, and did a repeating pattern around the whole cantaloupe. So I think it's a, a great medium that we can play around with. So we're going to explore what visual artists have done with this theme of food. Um, as most chefs know, there's basic cooking just to survive and eat, but then God gives us such an incredible variety of textures and tastes and flavors and ingredients that we get to play around with. So um, certainly we'll appreciate that. But let's look at and see what some visual artists have done with the concept of food. This first one I thought you would get a kick out of. Uh, it's a painting that was commissioned by the Roman Emperor Rudolf II. And he paid Giuseppe Archimboldo to do a self-portrait of him. Now you'd think he might would want a traditional one, which he did. The one on the right is what he looks like in the flesh. However, Giuseppe wanted to have a more imaginative self-portrait using vegetables, fruits, and blossoms to create this image of him. Um, and it's quite fitting. Um, you can see here that he must have existed or lived in a time, 1590, where there was no camera invented. So it was commonplace for kings and emperors and rulers to have their portraits painted um, to remember what they looked like. Paul Cezanne did a famous painting here as a still life with apples. And he painted in a time when the camera had been invented. And so he wasn't interested in capturing reality so much as he was um, wanting to create the sensation and the impression of the scene. So he was more focused on the quality of the brush strokes and the texture of the canvas, um, not so much on necessarily making it look like reality. Andy Warhol is another famous artist from the 60s. Um, and he did a repeating design of Campbell's tomato soup cans, which you might think is quite funny. But at this time in history, art was pretty much left to the wealthy and the aristocrats. Um, and he wanted to question and wonder if art should not be brought down to the common man. And if pop art was as valid as the highbrow art. So he would take images of famous celebrities um, and even question the design of products and illustrations and say, well, is this also fine art or is fine art limited to what you find in an art gallery or a museum? Um, you can see him screen printing, which is a method that you can repeat an image over and over again without having to necessarily hand paint every image. Um, so it's kind of a fun little play for him, which was the uh, Campbell's Soup was his lunch of choice for over 20 years. This one is Cakes by Wayne Tebow. He was also a pop artist from the 1960s, although he didn't set out to be a fine artist. He actually started as a cartoonist uh, with Disney. And he went out to work as a commercial illustrator, but he ended up doing fine art pieces. And he is treasured as an artist that um, captures a lot of nostalgic memories for Americans. And so memories of going to the ice cream shop with family or going to the bakery and just capturing the beauty of all the patterns and colors and kind of that heartfelt childlike wonder of being around sweet treats. Here's a ginormous sculpture in Minneapolis called Spoonbridge and Cherry, kind of a whimsical piece. And there's actually water fountain spurting out of the top of that cherry stem. So it's kind of a fun interplay between food and art. This is something fun I saw online and some artists had taken pieces of toast and replicated famous paintings from the past. I thought it'd be fun for you to take a pause, play a little game here and see if you can match the famous painting to the, I guess, toast based art. Number one is The Scream by Edvard Munch. Number two is a self portrait by Frida Kahlo. Number three is called Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. And the last one, number four, Sunflowers by Vincent Van Gogh. See if you can peek and uh, match those up. Now it's time to create. So I'm going to give you a couple of options for your lesson. 
Option one is going to be created either on paper or canvas or even computer or camera. Option two is you're going to be using actual food itself. Um, if you do not have a parent that can help supervise or help you with cutting, I'm going to suggest that you lean toward, towards option one unless you want to work together with family members or if your parents are comfortable with you using a knife to cut and do what you need to do with the food. So option one is to draw or paint a piece of work concerning food, but more important than anything is I want you to consider the theme or message that you want to express in your piece. I want you to think about the why and the reason why you're creating this piece of artwork. The second thing I want you to do is to select a genre or a type of style. So I'm going to go through a couple concepts here. As artists, we all have different personalities and we have different reasons why we want to make things. So I wanted to make a little list and you can kind of select from this list what's most valuable or, or important to you. So different themes you could do could be for social activism, personal storytelling, to worship, to study, to create beauty, or to tell a story. And I'm going to go through those in a little bit more detail in a second. And the second thing you're going to do is select a genre, whether it's illustration, cartooning, photography, painting, architectural design, graphic design, or a sketchbook journal. So let's look at through some of these options that you're going to have one by one. The first option you have is creating art for social activism to incite change. So maybe you're the type of person that wants to draw attention um, to help people change their lifestyle. Maybe you're concerned that people are genetically modifying our seeds, um, or maybe you want to do a political comment on how Americans are eating too much food or too much sugar, or maybe you're concerned that the FDA has too many chemicals in our food. So you could choose to do a painting or a cartoon or anything you like that would kind of represent your feelings um, about how our food is being changed and uh, some of the possible concerns you have about that. Another option is to tell a personal story or share an experience. Uh, maybe you have memories of a grandma that always baked with you, or you have special memories of um, being somewhere with family or a particular dish that was cooked that you have a heartfelt connection with, and you want to memorialize that in your artwork. So you are welcome to do any type of creation that would kind of capture that memory for you or even the feelings behind that memory. Another reason people create art is to worship. Um, and some people love just even in the time that they're drawing and creating to be praising God. So maybe you want to get some images or scientific illustrations that you want to try copying and studying the shapes and the designs of different seeds or blossoms or fruits or vegetables. Or maybe you want to take a couple images from your kitchen and just try to do a stylized design of them. And as you're sketching, just be thanking the Lord for his incredible creation and the gift he's given you. D is an option for those of you that are more like to research and understand things deeply. Those who are big life questions. Um, maybe you want to know your personal history more, like what food you ate as a baby. Were you neat and tidy when you ate your food or picky and messy? You could interview a family member uh, about their memories around food and make a piece about of art about it. Or maybe you're curious about famine and you want to study about a historical event when people ran out of food and document your feelings and thoughts that you learned about studying that time in history. Or maybe it's something practical and you want to know how people kept food fresh when there was no electricity. Uh, maybe you want to look at um, how they did that. And after you research and learn, create some artwork showcasing all that you learned and document document what you find with your artwork. Some people like to create art just for the sake of beauty or decorating or building something. So you have the option to, to create a building or a wallpaper pattern or a product inspired by this food theme. Maybe you want to work like a graphic designer and create a menu design that's really cool. Maybe you want to be an interior architect and sketch out views of a restaurant concept you have. Um, or maybe you just want to have a style of art that you want to try out that would hang up on the wall and beautify your home um, around the theme of food. 
Some students love to be storytellers and they are full of character ideas and story ideas. So you could get inspiration and um, choose some fruits and veggies that you could design into characters and create an illustration for a picture book or make some type of short story or poem that's illustrated. The second option you have, if you don't want to be drawing, painting, and the like, you can actually use food and create some type of food sculpture. If you're going to do option two, please make sure you get mom and dad's permission, um, as you might need to be cutting some things with a knife and you'll want supervision for that for sure. Um, but with this, I want to really encourage you not to look at what other people have done online or copy something off Pinterest. Really, this is for your own creativity and I think you'll be more proud of your work if you just get some raw materials together and start to create with what you have rather than try to replicate something you've seen somebody else do. So if you're going to do option two you can gather your plates and cutting board and toothpicks, cookie cutters, a fork to squash things, um, and all kinds of different finger foods whether they're dry or moist um, and come up just gather your supplies and see what your uh, imagination comes up with. Either way, whether you choose option one or two, I'd love it if you could turn it into me with an artist statement, meaning you're going to just give me at least a sentence or two explaining the thought behind your piece. And it's going to sound very different at a sixth grade level than it does at a kindergarten level. So for example, if I was a sixth grader and I did that painting on the left, um, I would say something like I wanted to do a painting that shows how some bad ingredients in our food are hidden. I've layered color on top of my subject to show how information has been blurred. So you can see there the artist kind of covered up the name of the chemical or the nitrites that are in the McDonald's um, with all those cool textures. Um, at a kindergarten level, your artist statement might be very different and very simple. Um, as easy as something like, I love pretzels and peanut butter, and I wanted to see if I could make a cool pattern and eat it. So just give me a little statement as far as what your intent was, um, going through those reasons why artists like to create, and just tell me what particular one you were drawn towards and what that tells you about yourself. And um, I can't wait to see all the variety of projects that come in. I'm so excited to see what you guys have fun creating. I hope you love exploring and just thinking through all these ideas as they relate to God's amazing provision of food for us and all that we have to say about it. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon.